Take it away. Steve, you're giving away all my secrets. <laughs> Hi, like Steve mentioned, I'm Lexi. I lead brand partnerships and content strategy at Chobani. And today I'm going to walk you through a case study that is probably one of my most favorite projects that I've worked on at Chobani. And like you mentioned, a winner of an EIS award earlier this year. So with that, let's get into it. So today I'm going to cover a, a light version of Chobani's email evolution, uh, the Chobani Gimme's case study, and then go through some results and learnings from this project. So Chobani is a very different company or brand than many of you in this audience because we don't have an e-commerce platform. I don't know information uh, that's directly correlated with my email database about what these shoppers are buying, how much, what flavors, all of that information. Uh, so we're limited in, in a lot of that information that all of you have. So prior to 2017, uh, Chobani really didn't have an email marketing strategy. Then in 2017, uh, we started to utilize a, a list that we had, even though we didn't have an email marketing strategy, uh, and started to infrequently batch and blast emails to, to our base. So we knew that we needed to make a change, and in 2018, overall as a company, we started to have a technology shift and really started to think more about first-party data and what that means to Chobani. And with that, that meant that we needed to focus on email growth. And that email growth was pretty surprising, astonishing, amazing, whatever word you want to use for Chobani. We had quadruple digit growth for our email base in 2018. And with that, we started to kind of dip our toes into a little bit of segmentation, uh, just kind of testing the waters on a couple campaigns after we saw all of that email growth. And finally, uh, with all of the growth that we saw in 2018, we knew that we needed an ESP partner that could help us get a little more sophisticated with our email marketing strategy and also be a, a forward-thinking partner for us. So with that, we made the shift at the end of last year to Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Uh, and with that partnership with Salesforce uh, in, in 2019, this year, we're really calling that our walk phase. We've done a great job of getting our team to think email first when it comes to all of our owned and operated campaigns. Email is where we have the, the opportunity to reach most of our subscribers because we know that we're going to hit their inbox versus social. I'm only going to reach a fraction of the people who actually follow me. Uh, or Chobani. <laughs> um, so we really have created this mentality across our team that every campaign that we do needs to be rooted in email. Uh, we also put a greater emphasis on loyalty and acquisition, which you'll see in this campaign. Through every acquisition campaign that we do, we make sure that we are addressing some of our preference center data uh, questions. So in our preference center data, the way that we've kind of started to create user profiles is by asking our uh, subscribers where they shop. Uh, this is the information that allows us to get a little more targeted with our email communication uh, when we don't have a lot of the information that you guys have. And finally, uh, Chamani has an internal uh, creative team. Uh, everything from producers to designers, a group of really talented uh, individuals. And so we've put a greater emphasis on the design of our emails and making sure that everything that we send looks beautiful and also gets people to click. So I'm going to start to jump into the case study now. And obviously, I started talking about email first. We knew that when we were going to launch a product, no matter what that product was, if we were going to do a solely owned and operated campaign, we needed to be thinking email first. So the product that I'm going to talk about today is Chobani Gimme's. It's our new yogurt for kids. And when we started to think about relaunching our kids' yogurt set, we wanted to create something that was obviously delicious and nutritious, uh, but something that kids would really want to eat. And then on the flip side, their parents would be really happy to give them these products as a snack. So we created 13 SKUs and tubes, shakes, and crunch format. Crunch is similar to a Chobani flip, if you've had that before. Uh, and each of those flavors is paired with an equally as charismatic character to really bring those flavor profiles to life. So with that, if my video plays, uh, I'm going to introduce you to the Chobani Gimmies. These may be coming to our town. Wow! Extra, extra! The 
Jimmy's are coming. <laughs> little humor. Uh, so with this really fun product, we needed to do something that was equally as fun to launch it. However, we knew we had a challenge ahead of us. We had a limited amount of people in our base who we knew fit the Gimme's audience profile. No, I'm not talking about kids. We're not targeting kids. We're targeting parents who have those kids. Uh, and the only kind of way that we knew that we had some people in our base was based on some soft launch emails that we had sent about the new platform. So based on engagement with those emails, we made the assumption that, okay, maybe you're interested in this product. Our objectives for the campaign were, you know, this is a new product. We want to create some awareness and some buzz around this product. And the second one was to um, focus on acquisition. We needed to grow that parent's base so that we had a community of people that we could speak to on a one-to-one -one basis. And we wanted to leverage our existing community to extend the reach of this campaign. So with that, we created our first ever 14-day Chobani Gimme swag drop. If you're not familiar with a drop, it's when you release a certain amount of items and they're either purchased or given away on a first come, first serve basis. Uh, so we created all of these kind of custom items, merchandise items, our first time creating something other than yogurt uh, that were based off of the flavors and the characters that represent these flavors and gave away these items. Remember, we don't have an e-commerce platform, so the only way that we could uh, distribute these items was to give them away. So we gave them away 12 p.m. every day for 14 days to really create some hype and excitement around this new launch. And with that, I'm gonna play some of the merch. So I'm going to start off by saying, unfortunately, I don't have swag to give you guys. I really wanted to bring some, but we don't have any more. Uh, you could see this stuff kind of went like crazy, and the results that I have to share are pretty incredible. Uh, but our team, so in-house, our team designed and produced all of these items. We released about 20 different SKUs, uh, 1,700 total items, so varying quantities of each item, everything from about 10 units uh, that went per day to 500. And you saw skateboards, onesies. We worked with an artist to create one-of-a-kind custom denim jackets, which were so cool. And definitely want to point out the fanny pack, very on trend here, with all of the giveaways this week. <laughs> So how did this thing actually work? If you didn't get the sense from the video, we were obviously using email to drive our subscribers to a site. Um, so 14 day program, but the day before the launch, 
we sent out an email to our base saying something's coming. A lot of people here have talked about how an oops email drives really high open rates. Well, that something's coming email did the same for us. It was one of our best performing emails to date. So once we got people really excited, uh, we would send emails every day at 11.45 a.m. Eastern time uh, to get people ready for the drop that was going to happen at noon. So at noon, when you went to the site, you would see an overview, you'd see one of these first two screens on the slide, whether you were visiting from desktop or mobile, you'd see an overview of the item that we were giving away and a space to put all of your information that if you won, we could send you the product. This third image is a screen grab of our congratulations slide. So if you, were, if you were one of the lucky winners to win some of our awesome swag, you'd get a congratulations message, you'd get a little overview about the product, and that we would be in touch with your tracking information soon. If you did not win, you got an, uh, a message, something like, oh no, sorry, you didn't win, try again tomorrow, uh, and, and same overview with the, the product information. Since these were giveaways, we had to, at some point, manually close them that day. And once we closed the site, you would uh, get to this last screenshot that I have up here. Uh, this was a, a, a site, uh, it's the same site, but uh, really critical to the strategy around acquisition of this campaign. So if you arrive potentially at 12.05 p.m. that day, you would see this countdown clock and you would also see a space to enter your email to subscribe to our newsletter to be the first to know about the next drop. Uh, this was extremely, extremely important and I will tell you why in a moment. So overall, again, this was rooted in email. We sent 15 total emails, so the something's coming, and then the, the 14 emails, so one every single day. Uh, we, sent four, or we shared 14 Instagram posts and 15 Instagram stories. Social, again, was really just the support here. We knew that most of the, the target audience would be on email anyway. And then a few examples, old mock-ups of the emails that we sent. Um, you can see here that there were varying units. I have a few different examples to share. They all follow the same framework so that our subscribers knew there was some consistency. Once that email hit their inbox, they were waiting on that site for the, the drop to open at noon. Uh, so you would see an overview of the item that was being given away that day, a little description about it, the button to enter, some beautiful lifestyle photos. We're, we're a very creative company. We want to show off our creativity. And then finally, there would be a hint about what was coming the next day. So quickly, uh, our ooey gooey s'mores sleeping bags. They were awesome. Did not get one of those, unfortunately. <laughs> and our busy buzzy strawberry earbuds. Uh, so those ones had about 500 units. That's where the, the variation in the amount of items that we created came to life. So with that, the results. Um, assuming you guys know this one was a success, but I want to walk through some of these really important numbers that I have to share. So all in all, we increased our subscriber base by about 3.5% in 14 days. This number might look small, but it's not. It's about uh, four to five times the, the increase that we see when we do other types of giveaways. And what's important here is, remember, we don't, we're not selling anything online. So every time someone is buying something, potentially from one of your sites, you're acquiring a new subscriber. We don't have that ability. So this number was really, really important for us and really hit on that goal of acquisition for the campaign. This other number here, 53% uh, increase in retail subscribers. So going back to that preference center where we ask people, where do you shop? Tell us more about, about the stores that you're visiting on a, on a regular basis. We saw a huge increase, a huge spike in those subscribers. Uh, and the reason we saw that is because every time someone would subscribe on that landing page, they would be triggered with our welcome journey. Our welcome journey obviously encourages our subscribers to update their preferences, and this group clearly did. So they were on alert, they knew what they were signing up for, and they wanted to share where they shop. So it was a huge win for us. 
Then, the numbers that Steve alluded to, these are really, really strong numbers to be able to hold for a 14-day time period. Uh, so on a daily average, our open rate was over 200% uh, above our benchmark. Really, really impressive, at least for me. And our click to open, uh, the daily average was 170% over benchmark. So people clearly were coming back and they wanted to win this swag. We also did a great job, I think, of reaching new people. So we talked about wanting to leverage our existing base to bring in new people, extend our reach, and we did just that because we had a, a roughly 50-50 split of existing customers or fans coming to our site and about 50% new uh, visitors coming to the site. So really achieving those goals of rewarding as well as acquisition. And then another favorite stat of mine uh, outside of all of the eBay stuff is 64 seconds. So across the 14 days, these items were claimed literally in seconds, in just over a minute. 1,700 plus items in 64 seconds. So there was clearly demand for these products. And then some fun results. Uh, six press articles from trade and consumer publications. I think because this was the first time that Shivani created something outside of yogurt, there was some appetite to actually share about this program, which was really exciting for us to see pick up by Forbes, Ad Age, and Ad Week. And then the 20 eBay listings. We wanted to create really cool, exclusive, one-of-a-kind items. And clearly, there was a, there were a handful of people that felt the same and felt that these were cool enough that they could actually get some money off of the items that they want. So that was kind of a, a fun one for our team to see. So there are probably a million things that I could share uh, about our learnings and the key takeaways that, that we had from this campaign, but I think these are three that are really important for this group here. So relevance is key. We found the group that we wanted to talk to, and we, we achieved the results of really high open rates and click to open rates. So clearly this was relevant to them, and we weren't kind of overbearing uh, and oversharing with people who didn't want to hear from us. We also made the, the conscious effort to uh, suppress any subscribers who hadn't engaged with our emails after a certain amount of time because we didn't want to spam them and, and lose their subscription to our list, if you will. Uh, the second one here, I think, is an opportunity for Chobani all around personalization that potentially could have increased our engagement and reach. Uh, we really didn't do a lot of personalization here. Um, outside of the, you know, hi, Lexi, welcome to day so-and-so of the swag drop, uh, maybe there were other things that we could have tried in terms of personalization, like, oh, you didn't win yesterday, but try again today, or you won yesterday, but there's still another chance to win today. Um, and then the second thing that if I had to do this program over again, I would leverage Ad Studio, which is part of Salesforce Marketing Cloud's platform. Uh, sales, uh, Ad Studio allows you to go and target those subscribers on other platforms such as social. So those people that we suppressed from the list, could we have reached them on Facebook and maybe re-engage them to get back in that user flow? And then the third one is optimizing, optimizing for a shorter campaign duration. So yes, we maintain consistent open rates, click to opens throughout the entire campaign, but 14 days feels a little long. And what we started to see was that the amount of subscribers coming in, new subscribers that we were gaining each day started to trickle uh, as we got to the end of the 14 day campaign. And also weekends were quite quiet for us, which was a little bit surprising because you expect that people are are definitely tuned in to their, their phones on the weekend. So um, those are the, the big ones Lexi, for us. that was cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> we have time for questions for Lexi. Walter from Message Gears. I'm just curious, are you guys planning on re-releasing, I'm sure everyone's thinking this, the products and making them available on an ongoing basis through yeah. your website? I mean, I would love to. I'll never say never, but uh, at the moment, uh, it's not in the pipeline. We have started to kind of do other partnerships where we're creating merch because we, we have seen the success with this campaign. Uh, we did a partnership with Chiquita Bananas earlier this year where we co-branded um, hoodies, best friend hoodies that were really cute. So I'm sure you'll see more of that from Shimani. 
Hi. I'm curious to know what your content calendar looks like and how far in advance you planned yeah. for a launch like this. Yeah. So we are definitely a nimble and flexible team. We like to be planning on a quarterly basis, but sometimes plans don't don't work out the way that you hope they do. Uh, this one, I would say, took us probably two to three months to, to create. Um, but yeah, our, our content calendar, we like to have a high level overview for the year, and then we really get into those quarterly plans, but we're flexible. Lexi, you mentioned that you didn't, you, you'd love to do more personalization of a program like this. I'm curious, what sort of, did you get unique and new data off of these, uh, off of these interactions that will help you personalize in the future? Did you learn, in other words, did you learn new things or get new data points that you'll be able to leverage? Yeah, I, I think the, the best answer for that one is really with the retail subscribers. I, I, that would be my answer to be able to understand, well, two things. One, you know, the people who engaged with this, could we re-engage with them if we ever launched a, a second drop or another merchandise campaign? Uh, and then the second one is those retail subscribers. For us, it, it's a that group of people uh, are probably our most engaged and fastest growing group. And so if we have an offer or a new product launch, we're able to, to go and communicate with them. So, you know, not exactly tied to this one, but still we are able to, to get some data points that would help us in the future. And you said, said about half, you were, about half of them were new customers? Were coming, that you were netting off of this? The, the site visitors, yeah. yes. And we had like about a 53% increase in those retail subscribers. And did they, did they prove out to be good, good yes. customers in the end? These were people that actually were, were interested in, in the product as opposed to just interested in swag. Yes, we have found that they've still continued to be engaged with our, our email marketing, which is pretty incredible. And I think, you know, obviously when someone is purchasing on your site, they're going to put a, a credible email address because they want to get the receipt or they want to be able to track their package. It was kind of the same in, in this instance where they're obviously going to give us a correct email address because they want to find out what's happening the next day. And, you know, I guess it's up to them if they want to unsubscribe at a later date. But we found that, that uh, we have some engaged subscribers. In, in back? Did we have one in back? Maya? Right. Oh. Raise your hands. Right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, have you tracked these over the longer term? I mean, particularly the new, um, the new subscribers. I mean, how engaged are they maintaining over time? And yeah. have you partitioned them off so you can come back in a year or something and really see long term? Yeah, so to be honest, I think that we could probably use some help in, in that space. We have seen, though, from our unsubscribe rates uh, that those people seem to be still engaged. But I think if we wanted to really distill and, and track you know, over time, we probably need to look into to doing something a little more than what we're doing at the moment. <laughs> Lexi, that was great fun. Thank you so much. Thank you.